So why are medications like Manjaro and Ozempic in the GLP-1 agonist class, why are these medications game changers? Medications like Wegovi, Manjaro, which are in the GLP-1 agonist medication class, we're using them now for weight loss and diabetes. Why are these meds so good at losing weight? And why have they caught on with so many people across the country? That's a very complicated question, but we should start at what the history is for weight loss medications in this country and across the world. First off, let's define what we're gonna call obesity for the purposes of this conversation. We have this thing called the BMI, uh, body mass index. A terrible way to uh, stratify um, what is normal, but is a very good way apparently to stratify what is abnormal, obese, which is 30% or greater. We have used this number to you know, in the trials for GLP-1 agonists to classify what patients will be on the medications without any without any other comorbid diseases like um, cholesterol, high cholesterol, um, renal disease, heart disease, or other issues, uh, other health issues that put you at high risk for complications. That's the beginning. First off, obesity is a BMI of 30% or more. We all know that GLP-1 agonists have um, another indication, 27% or greater with one of those uh, caveats, conditions that I just mentioned, and more, including prediabetes and diabetes, uh, as a reason or an indication, that's what we call it in, in medicine, indication for why we, we can start the medication and get a good outcome. At least those were the conditions that were set during the trial and proven over the trial, phase one through uh, phase three, and got FDA approval. This was in 2005 for diabetes, and then um, Sisenda was approved, and later semaglutide, which is considered like, a, I would say a second or a third generation, second generation um, GLP-1 agonist, um, semaglutide was, was approved in 2017. And after that, we got, in 2020 and 2021, we got, you know, good old Manjaro, which right now is the, you know, the king of the mountain of weight loss for GLP-1 agonist weight loss medications. So what actually it's not Manjaro, right? It's, it's, it's actually, um, it's called Zepbound, which is the terzipatide, um, GLP-1 agonist medication, cousin of Manjaro. So those are the medications. We've already defined what the obesity um, um, is. So let's go back, let's go back in history. In the 1950s, uh, it was widely used, Fentramine was widely used for weight loss in the 1950s, 1960s, ended up losing, falling out of favor uh, due to cardiovascular issues. Uh, Fentramine, if you don't know, is actually a stimulant. So um, it, it, fell out of, it fell out of favor because of the, the, the cardiac. What it causes was a lot of tachycardia. Um, and then that ended up having to cause uh, cardio, uh, cardiovascular issues, heart issues. So it fell out of favor because of that. Then in the 1970s, 1980s, we started to use serotonin, 5-HT medication, which have been used also in this space of um, depression. Those medications were okay, um, but the f not very effective and also fell out of favor because of an issue with pulmonary hypertension, which means, you know, high pressure in the, 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 the lungs, which leads to issues with respiratory failure and, and problems with breathing. Clearly not something people want to risk just to lose weight. Um, grabbing onto another, you know, pathology just to lose weight is just doesn't make sense. So uh, using these medications fell out of favor as well. Then for some reason, went back to fentramine, but added it with another medication called fenfluramine. Um, I don't know if you've ever heard of this. It's called the fenfen. Um, fenfen was a, a, a thing in the 90s uh, for medication, for a, a medical weight loss medication. And that quickly fell out of flavor, <laughs> not flavor, quickly fell out of favor because it caused actual heart disease, valvular heart, heart disease. Like, you know, the actual valves of the heart were being hurt and, 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 and damaged by this, this medication. And it was quickly pulled from the market um, when after, in after uh, market um, research or after market adverse effects were being reported. And that was not good. After that, in various countries, and in this country, the United States, we had other medications such as um, Orlosat that's been um, approved for 
for uh, weight loss, which basically um, that fell out of favor in, in the late 90, 1990s. Um, it fell, fell out of favor since then due to just terrible flatulence, um, greasy stools, um, greasy discharge upon passing flatulence, which is very embarrassing. Um, and, you know, even leakage, not even, you know, you know, having passing gas or anything, it would cause, it could cause leakage of um, greasy stools. So clearly those side effects are just terrible. If you notice, there's a trend here. Um, most of the medications that we've had from the 1950s through the late 1990s um, all caused uh, severe, if not, you know, life-threatening, um, severe adverse effects on the post-marketing side after, you know, they've tried it and seen it was, you know, okay in the trials. On the post-marketing side, it ended up being, you know, not a, such a good thing uh, for a lot of patients and they fell out of favor. But especially with that FenFen, FenFen was terrible and, you know, that was just pulled off the market. It's not available. So that leaves us with now, it's just, you know, in the late 1990s, early 2000s, um, left us only really um, with fentramine. And, and fentramine, they started to combine it with other medications like topiramate, which is a, actually an, an anti-seizure medication. I guess that was to try to combat the tachycardia, the heart rate, the, the stimulant part of it. Um, and you know, even that didn't have much of a, of a, of a weight loss aspect. You would, you know, patients would typically lose between five to 10% of their, of the, the weight, their original weight. And much, many patients need to lose a whole lot more than that. And, and only that fentamine by itself typically should not be used for more than three months at a time. So if you need to lose more weight over a longer period, um, it's just not, a, it's not a good medication to actually reach your goal. So we're stuck again. Um, not many medications out there at, you know, from the 1950s all the way through, you know, the 2000s, still not good efficacy, terrible, terrible side effect profiles. Some of them, you know, even like I said, pulled off the market due to their side effect profiles in the case of FenFen. So yeah, we're, we're stuck. People are needing to lose weight. Um, and needing a medical help to lose weight when it, you know, a significant amount of weight. And, you know, doctors really couldn't offer anything that was safe and effective. Later on, we had other medications like naltrexone um, mixed with bupropion, which are, you know, naltrexone is basically a medication we use for, um, it's an opioid antagonist. It basically blocks the receptors for opioids. And we use that medication typically in, um, well, one of the ways we use it is to stop alcohol, um, binge drinking. And Contrave um, is bupropion, also an uh, uh, antidepressant uh, medication. So naltrexone and bupropion together were, were found to also cut the appetite um, again, but people just don't like the way those medications feel. I mean, you have nausea, vomiting, uh, you could have constipation, headache, um, dizziness, insomnia, it goes on and on. So yeah, those, that medication side effect profile was just, and they were common too. So that side effect, those side effect profiles were just way off and, and, and no one wanted to stay on those medications for any amount of time that was long enough to lose enough weight. So that was off the table. In the meantime, um, surgery was still, you know, is still on the table. Uh, those aren't medication weight loss, weight, medication options for weight loss, but um, obviously I want to just mention them. Um, you have, you, you, can go under, you can go under the knife, you can go into the OR and have different devices placed either in the stomach um, or you can, you know, you can have a part of your, 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 your GI tract removed or tied or purse string. Um, and these things uh, typically lose, you know, significant amount of weight. I'm not definitely, I think they're, they're an option for many patients, but some patients just are, have fear of going to the OR or just not a candidate because of their weight to go to the OR and still would need possibly some sort of weight loss prior to going in. So there's still a, you know, a need to lose weight before even going to the OR and they can't do that. So if they can't lose weight to go to the OR and they need the OR to lose the weight, where are we at right now? So um, the medication still had a space, there was still space to create some sort of medication to help lose weight. And here we are, the GLP-1 agonist that kind of fell into our laps, to be honest with you. Um, the GLP-1 agonist uh, represented a, a, a chance for, in around in the early 2000s, for us to treat diabetes. Uh, that's the original 
um, indication that was garnered for the, you know, the first GLP-1 agonist medications. Um, I've talked about it on my other videos. I'm not going to go through the mechanism of action of GLP-1 agonist, but I will say that over the first, you know, the first decade or so um, in post-marketing, it was obvious that patients on D on these medications, on GLP-1 agonist medications, were losing weight. Um, and of course, the, <laughs> the the manufacturers of these medications will not miss a trick. Um, and they, you know, and, and, and to be honest with you, they did a good thing for us and got us um, trials to show whether or not, you know, GLP-1 agonists had an indication for weight loss with or without diabetes. And here we are. We've got um, now some good ones. We've got pretty good ones, right? We've got semaglutide, which is you, you know the the active ingredient in um, Wegovy, which is the cousin, the weight loss cousin to the diabe diabetic medication Ozempic, and we also have the dual receptor GLP-1 and GIP agonist um, medication Manjaro, which is terzipatide, the active medication, the active ingredient in um, Manjaro, which is a diabetic um, medication. And we have Zepbound, which was recently in October of 2023, October, November 2023, won its FDA approval for weight loss as well. Um, I've gone through that on another video where I show you and we talk about you know, how effective Munjaro is versus semaglutide. Although, again, no real head-to-head -head trial has been reported yet, but there's one in the works. And I've also talked about the fact that ritatretide, um, which I'll talk about in another video, is on the way. By, I, I expect that by 2026 sometime, maybe 2027. And that's a triple um, receptor uh, medication. And I was looking at some of the numbers of the the trial and the phase two trial that was that was put out in the New England Journal of Medicine um, last year where um, yeah it showed it showed a lot of promise I mean the thing gosh I'm not going to give it away <laughs> talk about another video but we're talking about major weight loss it looks like this class of medications these types of medications are changing the way that we as physicians and patients that come to us um, look at their opportunity to lose weight which is amazing right um, we've already um, outlined that weight loss um, is necessary in obesity patients with, you know, BMI 27, 30% or more to get them back down below 27% due to the fact that above those levels, you're having more, you know, issues with hypertension, um, cardiovascular disease, neurovascular disease, um, peripheral vascular disease. Um, you know, these patients in some types of cancers have more rates of cancer um, you know, and, and, and they seem to die more in, in all cause mortality. So, you know, just being overweight, obese is, um, in, in and of itself is a disease. It could cause you, you know, real problems. It's just, it's not just a condition where, you know, we, we can just leave it alone and not address it. I think that, you know, these medications are a game changer because the fact that the side effect profile is a lot better than any of the medications we've had in the last 70 years, since the 1950s. I mean, you're talking, you're talking major, major changes um, for a condition that you know, affects millions of people. This class of medications is definitely, definitely a game changer in that it gives you the opportunity to lose weight effectively, um, safely, with a side effect profile that actually can be managed if you really pay attention to the dose and exactly what you're taking in your body um, and, and have a good relationship with a, um, a doctor who is prescribing you the medications and uh, has selected the right one for you because it's not just grab the Manjaro because Manjaro is better on paper um, and better in real life. Uh, most more people lose weight, a lot more weight with the Manjaro, but it's, that doesn't mean it's, it's, it's just right for you and you can just grab it you know, indiscriminately. Um, every patient should be e examined. Every patient should be evaluated and the medication needs to be selected correctly and the dosing should be watched as you, you go up. I mean, uh, yes, in the trials, they pushed everybody to the top doses most times. I mean, if that's the end point, the end point that they're studying um, is the top dose, then yeah, they're, they would push you to the top dose and then, you know, your adverse effects or what your adverse effects are and they would they would um they basically just write them down and into the uh, study and they they document them but in real life we don't have to do that um, we would 
you know, we can dose you and titrate you to a point where you're losing weight safely and minimize those effects. That's not something we could have done before with the other medications because the, you know, the, the effects happen even on the, some of the lower doses um, and made, you know, it very hard for people to take the medication for any extended period of time. GLP-1 agonists are game-changing medications, in my opinion, due to the fact that they work losing weight between 15 to 20, even greater than 20% in many patients. They are uh, safe. The side effect, pro pro the side effect profiles um, are very low, I mean, very minimal. If you, if we do the right thing by, you know, selecting patients correctly and patients follow the instructions and, and do exactly, um, well, you know, follow their bodies and follow the instructions given by their, their, their primary care physician or their, their physician who is um, consulted on the weight loss. And I think also the ease of use. Um, the fact that these medications, uh, the injectables can be done once a week, make it a lot easier to be um, adherent to the treatment and not forget a pill here, a pill there, um, and get maximal effect of the medication over time. We've also seen in you know post-marketing that in, for now, not much in the way of post-marketing uh, side effects. We've had, we've had reports of pancreatitis, um, very minimal. Um, interestingly enough, we um, are not seeing any of these pancreatitis, at least with the phase two trial for retatrotide. I We're looking at the stats, zero. We'll talk about that later. But anyhow, um, man, these uh, medications are almost too good to be true, right? As a doctor, I am still very, very weary um, for side effects. I am looking out for my patients to make sure that nothing wild is going on. Uh, I test them regularly uh, at irregular intervals as they're losing weight. And as the longer they're staying on it, the more you know, lab sets I get at you know three to four month intervals to make sure that everything is okay with the liver, with the kidneys. Um, I ask them questions all the time about their, you know, GI habits. I'm asking them questions all the time about, you know, even depression, um, suicidal ideation, which is, you know, popped up here and there as a possibility of uh, an adverse effect. You know, these, you know, just because we're given the medication and, and, and the weight is uh, coming off them, great, but you don't want to create a situation where you um, are causing them harm on another side and it's just not worth it. The risk is not worth the reward. I am happy that these GLP-1 agonist medications have been discovered. Um, I'm happy that they've won uh, FDA approval for the indications of weight loss. I'm happy that they're continuing to look for more GLP-1 agonist medications and combining them with other receptors to make them even more efficacious. Um, that gives us more options so that way when we encounter other patients who don't fit your, you know, your ZEP bound and don't fit for Wegovi, maybe they will fit for in the future for medication like retatrotide. So the more options that we can, you know, the pharmaceutical companies and, you know, big pharma um, can come up with and, and, and make available, they have to make them available, um, we can make better decisions and give our patients these options that align better with their profile to reduce the, uh, the, the possibility of um, side effects and to increase the possibility of success. Just remember, when making lifestyle modifications, it's not just a medication that makes a difference. The most important thing that you can do is build a great team around yourself. I do individual and group coaching calls to help you with that. If you'd like to know more, check out the link below.